In this video, I'll show you how I designed an arid style bioactive vivarium for a small group of blue feigning death beetles. These are awesome little critters that kind of look like a living blueberry. They're easy to care for, fun to watch, and a perfect candidate for this type of setup. I'll talk more about that later, but until then, I'll get started. First of all, I'll build the enclosure. I covered my workspace with paper to start. As I've shown before, this makes it much easier to construct everything. The base of the tank will consist of two sets of Utrusta shelves from Ikea. I've shown and used these before in the DIY Ikea Aquarium demo. Since they're tempered, I can't cut them, and will have to use their measurements to design everything else. I used these dimensions to cut down a piece of plate glass. Only three cuts were needed to start. One for the width I just accounted for, one for the substrate tray, and one for the top. After making the cuts, I sanded everything down with wet sandpaper to remove sharp edges. I taped along the edges and wiped these areas down with isopropyl alcohol to remove oil and debris. These steps ensure the silicone adheres optimally and remains consistent. As I assembled the pieces, I anchored the corners with tape. Then I applied another bead to the interior, smoothed it out, and removed the tape. I used measurements from the constructed tank to create a top. Although I'm using it for a tank, it's made with the same materials as a window screen, so it's essentially the same thing. I stuck it to the top with some silicone and taped it down while everything cured. Once it did, I removed the tape and cleaned it up with the razor blade. I was also able to simply cut the paper and scrape it off the bottom to gain full access to the enclosure. Since it's a bare glass tank, I want to include a self-leveling mat. I have scraps of Eva foam from prior builds that I fit together under the tank. This build will only work with the frame on the front. I'll make that out of wood. I measured what I could and used the tank to mark boards as well. I cut them accordingly, applied glue, nailed them together, and left it to dry overnight. Here's a better look at how it fits on the front. I'll utilize neodymium magnets to lock the doors. I measured and created holes for them on the top of the frame. Then I used a generous amount of super glue to lock them in. I also attached a board to the top to make everything appear cleaner. There were a few inconsistencies that I had to fix with wood filler. I went back and sanded it down. I'll paint off this black and to make the job easier, I put a few screws on the inside. Once it dried, I applied silicone to the inside of the frame and pressed it onto the front of the tank. I also installed a piece of window frost film on the back to make things appear cleaner. At this point, it was nearly done, but I still had to address the doors. I cut down a piece of glass accordingly and secured a piece of wood to the side of each. I also embedded a magnet into these triangular pieces. I stuck them to the corner of the doors. While the silicone cures, I'll hardscape the enclosure primarily with these stones. They have an awesome layered appearance to them that I think is perfect for a desert style setup. Since I'll stack up a lot of stones, I included pieces of a crate light diffuser in the bottom to distribute their weight over a larger surface area. Another feature that will come in handy is a PVC pipe. I cut it to length and drilled holes near the base. These will allow water to more readily enter the pipe. I zip tied a screen onto the other end to close off the opening. In theory, this pipe should encourage water from the lower layers to evaporate and leave the system, rather than unnecessarily build up over time. I just had to remove a section of the egg crate and it fit perfectly in the back. This will probably work best with a simple false bottom. A thin layer of play sand should be more than adequate. I really just need an area where excess water can go prior to evaporating. The process will be slow, but that's alright. This system won't be watered frequently, and the lower portion of the substrate should be somewhat moist. From the very beginning, I kept imagining the base of a rocky formation, an area where erosion has covered a lot of the stones with sand and rubble. However, I wanted to keep this scape simple from a material perspective. Utilizing excavator clay seemed like the easiest way to pull this off, and it will accentuate the desert look I want. Much of the base will be hidden by substrate, so I used some other stones I had lying around to add some height without wasting the good ones. I concealed the PVC pipe to start to ensure I had enough stones. 
as I did I stacked them all in a horizontal direction to keep a consistent look. Then I branched out to the left and right areas, creating more stacked formations that heavily emphasize the stratified appearance of the stones. Of course I ensured it was all stable as is, but the clay will hold it together even more. By generously applying it between the cracks and around the formations, I was able to easily create the look I described earlier. It also made everything significantly more stable. I'll embellish it more later on, but this should give me a good foundation to work from. As for the substrate, it's composed of roughly one part cocoa fiber, one part organic topsoil, and two parts play sand. This mix will drain well so that it's dry in the upper portion and moist near the false bottom. Prior to adding it in though, I topped off this sand with a layer of charcoal that will help keep things fresh. Then I poured in a thick layer of substrate. I'll create additional detail with some spider wood. I like these branches specifically because they look like tumbleweeds or something similar. I think they really add interest and further drive into the desert theme. Topping it all off with dark sand brought it together even further. I didn't want to go overboard with greenery, but I knew that a few succulents would take this to the next level. I figured that just a few would get it looking proper, and you typically don't see a lot of plants in a desert environment. I also placed various air plants up within the branches. Rock rubble took everything even further in the direction I wanted to go. And after all of that, I think it looks pretty cool. I still have to add the doors though. I secured handles onto the triangles to start. Then I took a door over to the tank and marked for the hinges. I drilled for the screws and locked them in by hand. I repeated the process for the second door. The enclosure is pretty much done, so I'll begin stalking it. Since the beetles won't create much waste as is, I'm keeping their cleanup crew small with just springtails. I have a variety here that should thrive in this environment. Although they'll still spend most of their time near moist locations, they're better suited for arid conditions compared to what I'd usually use. Anyway, I placed a handful of substrate from the colony behind the formation on the right. I also added sprinklings of leaf litter here and throughout to give them additional places to go. From there I gave the plants a quick spray since I just put them in the environment. I'll do this sparingly about every 10 days or so. Target watering will allow me to give every plant individual treatment and ensure I don't overdo it. I guess that I should mention that I have an aquarium light over the top for the plants and a nano basking light to give the beetles the option of a hot spot. I think that about sums it up. Let's add the beetles. And there you have it, an arid style vivarium for blue feigning death beetles. I think it turned out really well and I love the simplicity of it. From the custom enclosure, to the hardscape, and sparse plantings, I think the combination of elements makes for something pretty special. That's all of course made complete by the beetles themselves. I'm really excited to finally add them into the animal room because I've been planning for it for quite a while and it's cool to finally bring a proper arid setup into the space. Of course I have plans to do more in the future that I cannot wait to share. More about this setup and that in the future. In the meantime, I want to know what you think about this one. Let me know in the comments. Until next time Serpa Squad, take care and peace. <laughs>